Toy Sargado or Kench as she is fondly called. Kench is a graduate of broadcasting of the College of Mass Communications at Western Visayas State University. As she immersed herself in the media landscape, she transitioned seamlessly into public service, beginning as a planning officer too in the Monitoring and Evaluation Division. Her dedication led her to become a Gender and Development Specialist too under the, sec under the Sectoral Coordination Division of the Philippine Commission on Women under the Office of the President. Notably, she played a pivotal role in establishing the MOU between the Philippine Commission on Women and the Climate Change Commission, championing gender mainstreaming in the environment sector. Currently, Kench serves as the Tourism Integrate Supports and Minds Women's Rights and Child Safety Desk Officer and Tourism Operations Officer to, at the Department of Tourism, Western Visayas. In this dual role, she continues to champion community development ensuring that tourism contributes positively to the well-being and safety of women and children. Kench, uh, you may take the virtual floor. Good morning and mabuhay. On behalf of the Department of Tourism Western Visayas, I would like first to commend and appreciate the efforts of the authors of this case study, gendering the informal tourism sector towards inclusive and sustainable growth, the case study of Boracay Island. Thank you for choosing Boracay Island as this is relevant and significant to the influx of informal workers in the island. And so with that, we would like to highlight the strategic key areas of the case study. Starting off with the methodology of the study, which has been efficient enough for data gathering, especially in mapping the roles of women as informal tourism workers, the conduct of key informal interviews and focus group discussions from the micro up to the macro dimension of women economic empowerment level have provided substantial information as to where are the women right now in the informal sector. The Women Economic Empowerment Framework which provided a vivid scenario of how different stakeholder groups from micro to macro level take part in the informal tourism sector. It provided information on the efforts of local government units and concerned national government agencies, which can be improved using the data analysis and which can be replicated in other areas. Another is the national government agency's counterpart, specifically highlighting some tourism products and services. It is important to know that national agencies have implemented interventions to address concerns in the informal sector. Tourism industry is a comprehensive sector cross-cutting all other sectors. There are tourism products and services that are often focused with the formal sector because of the tourism standard and regulation. However, informal sector has also been prioritized through provision of technical assistance, livelihood trainings, and in supporting small business enterprises. You also have recommendations that are doable among people in the area. But we would also like to recommend that in the implementation of interventions, especially of gender mainstreaming, there are four key entry points that I highly recommend that, is very, that are very useful. First are policies. Our policy, Shuwan says, that might be in forms of department orders, special orders, administrative orders, memoranda, executive orders, and sectoral plans. Through this issue, one says, the organization expresses its recognition and acceptance of gender mainstreaming as a critical and legitimate concern, even in broad or general terms. In fact, during the conduct of our gender sensitivity training or God planning budgeting in tourism officers in different areas, we highly recommend to have their issued policies in the implementation of their interventions addressing gender concerns. Another important key entry of people are, are the relevant stakeholders who assume the task of implementing the interventions, but they might also be in forms of a sponsor or an individual or group who has the power to sanction or legitimize change. 
or in other terms, they are the head of the agencies or the big bosses. Another is the change agent or the individual or group who is responsible for actually making the change. Or perhaps what we call the God focal point system in every national government agencies and other offices. The target or the individual or group who must actually change are those who will benefit from the development. Of course, our beneficiaries have been a big role for this um, gender mainstreaming as we would want to have a change in their beliefs, behavior, and perception on God or gender and development for a sustainable and progressive individual. Another is the advocate or the individual group who wants to achieve change but lacks the power to sanction it. So they might be the volunteers um, who pushes campaign towards gender equality and women empowerment but lacks the power to legitimate it. And another key entry point that is also very important are the flagship programs or activities and projects that serve as a strategic entry point to gender mainstreaming in an organization. So this is where we directly addressing the concerns on gender through the kind of activities and implementation of programs and projects. And lastly, the enabling mechanisms. These refer to the systems that and mechanisms installed in the organization, such as allocation of budget and knowledge management system. In fact, it's not really hard to have a budget for God since under the Magna Carta of Women, all agencies, LGUs, are mandated to allocate 5% of its total budget to gender and development, but in some offices, still a challenge on how to utilize the 100% of their total God budget. But still, we encourage everyone to make use of these key entry points for gender mainstreaming. So aside from the strategic areas of the case study, we would also would like to share our insights or some of the observations on the case study. First is with the collection of sex disaggregated data. We commend the efforts for gathering all the data using your methodology and or the related studies for this case study. But as you mentioned on the specifically on the total number of informal workers in Barakai, which is a total of 19,000, you would want to know how many of them are women. So the collection of sex disaggregated data is usually lacking in all other agencies. But the importance of it is that they can utilize it for gender analysis and formulation and formulating their guide plan and budget, especially in the concerned LGU and concerned agency. It is one of the prevailing issues on gender mainstreaming, especially in the tourism sector, the unavailability of collected sex disaggregated data. While it is deemed necessary to generate God database, it is relatively known that gender analysis is not supported by data itself. This might also be the factor why there is little information on the status of women in the informal or of the women informal workers in the tourism sector. The lack of representation of women in the planning development cycle in the sector and those that are belong to the lower job positions, which are dominated by women, had implications to the programs conducted and policy formulation. Of concerned agencies. Another is the information on the division of labor with women working both reproductive and productive roles. Women suffered most with multiple burdens due to unrecognizable reproductive roles. You have included different nature of work of women working in the informal sector in Barakai, but some of the women in the informal tourism workers are working at night such as the fire dancers and reservoir performers of which you have not included in your case study but they might be experiencing more challenges than those who are working during daytime it is also better to include them as informants to know how they manage their time as workers at night 
and do the reproductive roles during the day without compromising both of their divided tasks. Working at night at crowded tourism areas such as bars would likely to cause harm among women workers such as sexual harassment and sometimes even receive indecent proposals for other tourists. Informal women workers are more vulnerable to multiple burden and any forms of violence and harm. According to the 2021 Trafficking in Persons Report, in the Philippines of the U.S. Department of State, Barbaca is among the tourist destinations in the Philippines where sex trafficking occurs. However, in the 2023 report presented during the conduct of third quarter meeting of the Regional Interagency Committee on Anti-Trafficking in Persons and Violence Against Women, of which the Department of Tourism is also a member of it, only one reported case of trafficking in the whole region has been stated. But if you ask the locals in Boracay, they are aware that there are trafficking happening in the island. It is good to know how, how come there is only few have been reported despite the rampant cases in the area. But women in the informal workers who are working at night might be at risk to this kind of situation. It is relevant to know how the local government units ensure the safety of not only tourists, but as well as those women working in the area. It is also important to instigate the implementation of the right to decent work under Section 25 of the Magna Carta of Women, stating that the states shall progressively realize and ensure decent work standards for women that involve the creation of jobs of acceptable quality and conditions of freedom, equity, security, and human dignity. The Department of Labor and Employment is mandated to make available occupational safety and health related programs and services to women workers, both in, in the formal and informal sectors. While DOT continues to promote the advocacy in promoting women and children, as well as to provide economic opportunities through the Tourism Works Program, which you have mentioned in your case study, are also known as the Tourism Integrate Supports and Minds, Women's Rights and Child Safety Program, and of course with other tourism products and services. Also, you have mentioned in your recommendation the conduct of gender sensitivity training. Well, in fact, the Department of Tourism Region 6 already been conducting this kind of training, but we first targeted the tourism officers who are our local counterpart in the um, different provinces and areas, cities and municipalities all over the region. So then they could cascade their learnings on gender sensitivity um, to their local areas, especially with the other tourism stakeholders, as we are also a bit in a challenge of a budget constraint. That, that's why we can only target few um, groups of trainees per year. But um, with the help of our local counterparts, the tourism officers, they could also make use of their uh, GAD budget in the conduct of this kind of activity. So it will help us through um, cascading the conduct of gender sensitivity and making our tourism stakeholders be gender sensitive and responsive. And also, the availability of the tourist police desks in tourism-related areas, such as Barakai, and there are also trained tourist police officers. Back in 2019, the Department of Tourism and the Philippine National Police signed a memorandum of understanding that strengthened the partnership to ensure safety and security of both local and foreign tourists through the top cop, or the Tourist Oriented Police for Community Order and Protection Program. It involves various trainings for police officers such as Tourism Awareness Seminar, Women's Rights and Child Safety, Values Formation and Effective Customer Service, Cultural Sensitivity Seminar, Language Courses, Risk Reduction and Crisis Management, and other tourism-related security trainings, which will enhance the skills of police officers on the proper ways of handling our tourists. And we also do hope that all the tourist police desks, stations in all um, tourism-related areas, especially in Barakai, are all functional. So this would be all of the insights and somehow 
few recommendations of the Department of Tourism Western Visayas for this case study. That would be all. Madam Ogidna, salamat.